Welcome, Welcome to Shade, to Shade in, the City. in the City. I am your girl, Trace. It's Nels. And today we are getting into our review of Married at First Sight, season 16, episode 14. I'm tired. I'm sorry, that was my that was my name of the episode. That's not really what it is. Um, that's just how I feel about the season. Now, uh, the rope, the feather, and the bidet is the actual name of the episode. Uh, Shade Squad, if you have not already, please make sure that you hit that like button. And that subscribe button. And y'all, let's get into it and uh let's get shady. Cause <laughs> there's a lot of shade, a lot of branches <laughs> coming out. This Um, as you know, we are getting into Nicole and Chris and installing bidets into the bathroom. I literally have two sentences about this because I didn't care. Uh, Chris thinks it's dope to do home projects together because he wants to do everything together. I think this is a little, I get it, newly married, honeymoon phase. Got to find your own hobbies. Um, I, they I, have I, like, I like the fact that he can do at home things. Okay, I did like that. I because did like some, that. Some, some men can't. They just have but, to pay But what I'm saying is just because you're doing it, that doesn't mean I need to be there to do it. I need you to know how to do it. I don't need to be there to help you and guide you. We oh, don't... I think she wanted to be there. That's the problem. She she wanted to test the thing out. I would have said, let me know when it's ready. Uh-oh, she was excited. I think she was excited to test that damn thing out. And I would have been too. And no. I would have said, hey, babe, let me know when you're ready. Nicole, 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 Nicole is a whole freak. She was, she was waiting. She was ready and waiting. Well, uh, maybe she needs more foreplay than we think. So she said, uh, <laughs> then speaking of foreplay, we meet up with Dr. Pia. Um, you know, she congratulates them on doing so well and then wants to dig deep when Nicole talks about her, how her and Chris, um, you know, didn't want to have sex on the honeymoon because they had such an emotional connection. They didn't want to mess that up. Um, and then Dr. Pia asks if there's any negative connotations with sex. And Chris talks about the people he's been with and how he felt at times that it was all, that's all he was good for. I said, mm -hmm. let me find out Chris out here slinging like that. That that's all that's, they wanted you with. That's why Nicole don't want you to know. It always be the quiet, nice ones, right? That's why uh, Nicole's like, no, we good. We don't, we don't need nothing else. So, um, yeah, no, then Nicole says her dating. Like, Y'all gonna turn me into a whole psycho. You stupid. Uh, Nicole says her dating history and talks about, you know, having hate sex, as she calls it, where she didn't necessarily like the guy. She just wanted to feel wanted. Uh, she says, although the sex may have been good, she didn't feel good about it after the fact. Um, can I just tell y'all, and please, if I sound a little agitated, aggravated, because I, she, I don't know. It's starting to irritate me now. Everything is a fucking therapy session with her. Everything has to be so deep. We're trying to talk about the bump and the grind, and it it turns into a whole. Um, she had enough of that with the bidet. They both did. They, they both had the water going up their booty hole. And, and 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 I know it's not just me because again, I was live on Twitter, y'all, and we were like, Nicole really needs therapy because this is she's, couples therapy. She's just figuring it out though. She's she's. You know, she's coming Jesus. around. Jesus, I, it's just everything. She got to talk how much she don't like herself. How much? Oh, she, she really every conversation. It's it's just too much, Nicole. It's it's too much. I can't even call you my twin no more. Um, so she says with Chris, you know, she felt good about what they did, and there's no shame attached. And Dr. Pia asked how the foreplay is, and Nicole admits that it's not as much as she would like. And Dr. Pia notices that Nicole is a little bit of a people pleaser. Uh, she tells her she thinks that her not getting what she wants as far as foreplay and just going along with everything is a pattern from her past relationships and tells her Chris should be her safe space and she should be able to share. Nicole then starts getting emotional and says it feels amazing having Chris being her safe space. And Nicole thinks she has so many issues and, you know, she's so f***ed up that, you know, Dr. P is like, OK, hold on, girl. I didn't come for that. I wasn't here for that. That, that was not my purpose. You got the wrong therapist. I don't I don't specialize in that. Um, so Nicole. Oh, she told her she's not fucked up. 
<laughs> well, she did, but Dr. P was like, whoa, <laughs> come on. Pastor Cal, Pastor Cal. <laughs> so, somebody else to deal with it. I'm right. here for sex. <laughs> what is it? Find somebody else to do it. <laughs> so Nicole wants to take accountability that people didn't just treat her badly. She allowed them to. I did like when she said that though, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean you have to beat yourself up about it. The fact that you can realize that you had a part in letting people treat you badly, I think is a, the hugest step. For me, it's, it's hard. It, for me, it's how far back she goes. I think that's what it is. I think that's because, what it is for me too. Because last episode, wasn't she talking about in high school? Like or high school, like that? yeah. Um, and now she's talking about her past relationships. She's probably talking about the same ones. It, probably the ones from high school. Who the hell knows? But what we need is there to be some evolution. You went through it. You learned from it. You evolved. And now, you know. Thank you. And not even that. Let's be present and move forward. As, as Nails was saying, let's be present in what we're currently in. Yes, we know that we've done things. And if we've learned from those mistakes, let's create new patterns and be healthy behaviors. Mm -hmm. I don't think we have to dwell on the thing. And and that's, want, that's what's bothering me. She's dwelling. She's and dwelling. If, my thing is, and if you want to beat yourself up about something from your past, let it be like your most recent past. Why are we going? Not even that. But we, all the way back. We see later in the episode, even Chris mentions to the guys that she likes like beating herself up. And I think in a way he wants to be there for her, but even him being the nice guy, it's a little bit much. He's like, that's not attractive. Mm -hmm. Just my thoughts. She realizes she still has a lot of work to do. And as you know, as they're going through this process and Dr. Pia reassures her, Chris is someone she can share those things with because there is not someone from her. This is not someone from her past. Um, and basically, Nicole says that she just expected Dr. Pia to come in and give sex tips that she didn't really feel like she needed anyway. And that's another problem for somebody who seems so lost. She thinks she know every damn thing. Mm -hmm. But OK, um, don't do that. Uh, I'm no, I'm not. No, oh, I thought no, you were. Giving, no, I thought you were giving me the look. No, you can be like you, you can be like that sometimes, but no, not not to this extent. But she basically tells her that she wants her to stop self deprecating, um, and talking about herself like that. And you know, that's because that's not who Dr. Pia sees in front of her, and that's obviously not who Chris sees. And I was like, thank you, please, somebody tell her. So then they come home to this chest full of sex goodies because you know dr pepper wanted them to spice it up a little bit and you know even though we know they're really the only ones doing it um and so nicole is questioning everything that in the we chest know of that we know of right um so she's questioning everything in the chest this annoyed me too because i'm kind of a little you know i ain't gonna tell y'all my business but i i would have had fun with that chest but anyway so hey, she, she's like, yeah, no, not, no, no, mm -hmm. not this. This will cause a rash. This, will, I was like, oh my God, you know, everything you again. My, and, and then it's not even that she even did that. It's that she didn't even open the floor for Chris to have an opinion about anything. Mm, I didn't even catch that, but that's true. I mean, she's literally pulling everything out the box. No, mm -mm, no, this thing. And he's just sitting there like. Well, basically, I mean, of course, if she's not comfortable with it, then he's going to be like, okay, well, we ain't doing it. Right. She didn't ask, well, how do you, what do you think about this? See what his opinion is. And then, you know, give her opinion. She, yeah, she, mm -mm. So she goes through it. She doesn't want to do any of it. And basically says that right now she's trying to focus on the mental elements of her marriage um, and herself before she starts trying to enhance something that's already good to you. You. Right. He, the one, like, he was the one that was just used for sex, okay? Right. Uh, <laughs> so they both sit down to talk and they agree they're open to trying different things as time goes on. Chris just wants to make sure she's satisfied. I said, oh, you got you a good one, girl. <laughs> you got you a good one. And Nicole appreciates that. <laughs> so she and that's why she like, said they don't need nothing else because she's satisfied. Right. She's like, I ain't about to be out here stalking nobody's windows and putting GPS trackers. She's like, we good where we at. So she lets him know that if decision day were today, based on the sex, she would say yes. Based on the sex life they already have. And I said, okay, cool. And yeah, y'all, it was more of Nicole going through her stuff. And it just, I just, I don't know. I, can I get happy Nicole back? Like jovial, like the, the deeper we get into the season, I'm like, oh my God, why are you? It's like, 
the same way she's talking about herself. Now I'm looking at her like, like, what is wrong with you? We didn't need to necessarily know all this. And neither did Chris, especially not if it happened in high school. My thing is, it's not even that weird knowing all of this because it's the same shit. <laughs> she's just reiterating the same, the same. shit over because I know she's talking these, these sex people that she didn't like that she you know this hate sex she's I bet you it's the same people it's the same situations we just keep on hearing about it oh we get it we get it we don't need to hear we get it, it at all we get it so right. let's move on to a couple uh, of not having sex Eris and Jasmine oh another they're not doing anything doing it now, Jasmine, you know, she's driving and she's explaining that this process is really getting to her. She said, you know, she came in open and optimistic and really trying not to put guards up, but she can feel them going up and she's concerned about that, but she is still hopeful. Now, Dr. Pia stopped by to see them and she asked how they're doing. Eris says, It's not what either of them envisioned uh, before coming into this, but, you know, that's part of the risk that you take signing up to marry a stranger. Mm -hmm. And she asked if he feels like it's something that can change. He says, you know, that's why we're still in it. Now, she asked if they still, if they feel like they're getting their needs met. Jasmine quickly said no. Um, and says, Here we go again, again, Jasmine. You're so quick to jump up and speak to someone else other than the person that you're with. I'm sorry, I, I gotta give it, I, I gotta get in her behind. I feel bad for her. I do, I, I when I tell y'all, it literally makes me emotional at times, sitting here watching this girl go through what she's going through. But the fact that she will not speak up until she gets in front of somebody infuriates me. It infuriates me because trust me, if I have a problem with my man before I go tell everybody else, guess who knows her? Know we have it. a problem. Mm -hmm. He will never hear anything about him outside of this house before I tell him. Like that's just I, I just don't believe in that, and I think that's insane. Mm -hmm. And I feel like Eris, in a way, even when they started talking to Doctor P, he looked kind of blindsided. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. Just my thoughts, y'all. So, y'all may disagree. She says with him not being sexually attracted to her, you know, they don't they don't touch, feel nothing. They don't do nothing. And it's something in the relationship that she's just not used to getting and something she needs. Now, Dr. Pia asked if they was if there's a friendship here. She said, Yeah. Oh, absolutely. He friends on me on the honeymoon. Mm -hmm. Dr. Pia said, I'm feeling some negative connotation here. And Jasmine said, I ain't trying to be a friend. I'm trying to be a wife. Right. And guess what? Wives communicate. Okay? They communicate. But she wouldn't know that because, you know, her family didn't do that. But, um... Or she, so she didn't like, see that. But even I know... Well, let me be quiet. I'm not going to bring my person. Well, she said, like, they don't even hug, you know. She wants, like... She, he's like, when she, when he sees her, nothing, like, he, they ain't no excitement. He don't hug me. He don't do nothing. He said and he, he said that sometimes it, they, it's just yeah he's like sometimes it's just been so long like he's like that it just feels awkward to to do it so basically she's she's telling she tells them that another part of being intimate is having those long deep you know intimate conversations and he says you know they talk but it ain't like you know last Tuesday we just had this super deep conversation right and you know th that's just not what it's hitting for so. <clears throat> Dr. Pia asked Jasmine if she feels like she's holding back from him and she says no but she does feel like you know she was a lot more open in the beginning and she does believe that you know she's starting to get this little bit of a guard coming up and a but she doesn't that she's holding back you said what? a little bit she even says that she volunteers information scary bullshit who to who? This, you know what? A lot of things that she said, <laughs> and that's an, I'm sorry. It was a lot of things that she said this episode that really like made my ass itch because it was just like, who are you saying it to? Because not him. Mm -mm. And there's the problem. 
Now, Dr. Pia says that she's getting this feeling that she's agreeable with him. You know, like she doesn't like stirring the pot and she just wants to keep the peace. And he's just like, mm -hmm, yep, absolutely. Yep. That's who and she is. says. Sometimes if someone asks, you know, something like basically she's not giving her real feelings about it. He brings up the whole thing with um, Dr. Pepper and how she likes to deep dive into conversations. And he says, you know, they had this exercise. And then even the next day they were chilling on the couch for like two hours and he was probing, trying to, you know, ask these questions and just start a conversation with her. And he was getting no questions, no feedback, no nothing. Now, Jasmine says, like, that's because he be sarcastic with me. You know, she gets this vibe like he don't even really want to be there. Mm. And Dr. Pia says, how you feel when she called you out? He said, I like that shit. And I, my notes say, we called it. We called it. <laughs> He like that's bitches. what he wants. He and it, it, I hate to say he this, like bitches. He wants a <laughs> Felina. That's exactly what he wants. He wants the same energy that his cousin gives. That's what he wants in the woman he Look, wants to be with. Jasmine was in complete shock. She was like, "Like what?" And Doctor P was like, mm -hmm, "That's what turned him on." I got your right. number, sir. I told you she cussed him out. One, it, it might be toxic, but he gives me. He might. Mm -hmm. He might. They gonna be right out. on that balcony, right? So she was like, basically, he needs you to initiate more and take charge. She was like, look, she's like, well, you know, I could try. <laughs> I, I don't know. Initiate a conversation. She can't even initiate a conversation. Right. Let me initiate, drop them drawers, okay? I'm really trying Ain't not no to way. be too hard on Jasmine Shay's squad, but she just really, I, I just feel it's very, I guess it gives me like a little bit kind of childish. Like, I just need her to speak. I don't know. So, so what you saying? He like a grown woman. Yes. <laughs> when I think of Megan the Stallion, I think of a grown ass woman. I think I think he would like Kirsten. Yes, because at least Kirsten can tell you, I want a house, I want a car, I want the I'm not mad at it. He even wants if she ain't got, look. look, even if she ain't got nothing on the inside to give you, she still know what she wants. You know what it is? He has such a strong personality, right? He doesn't have a problem expressing himself. He ain't got a problem saying what he feels and stuff like that. He want a, to make him feel like a little bitch. Like, make him want to be quiet. He wants, look, to switch roles. He want to be like, like Jasmine. Scared to say shit. Mm-hmm. It's just mm. <laughs> they they messed up big time. That's right. But I said it. I said it in the beginning. I said it. Well, anyway, so Eris and Jasmine, um, it looks like they're maybe cooking together. Um, and he let her know that he had a conversation with um her sister. And she told him basically that he needs to give her some things that they didn't have or didn't see their parents um doing growing up and jasmine says that you know her dad never said i loved you but she never questioned it because he always showed it and that's why she's not big on words she's big on actions so she says that her sister also told her that you know he only clapped for her because doc because pastor cal told him to now that was bad i'm sorry that was bad eris even if that's how you felt you shouldn't have said it that's not exactly how he said it though Well, he was like, well, there's no it. other way to take that. I, again, I'm pretty sure I may be wrong. I'm pretty sure Pastor Cal is going to call him out at some point and be like, I shared that with you. You didn't necessarily need to share that with her. It was she's already him. she's already feeling down on her. She already had what we call it LSE. She already got low self-esteem. So the last thing you want to do. It was it was it was on camera. Remember, before they even met, he said something like uh, your wife. I don't remember what he said, but um. Like if you're not attracted to her or something like that, or oh, I didn't realize that was said. Oh, if it was said on camera, it wasn't the clap. It wasn't. It wasn't the clapping. Oh. But basically, it was basically, um, oh, what if your wife isn't a ten or something like that? Okay, or some. So I don't remember what it was, but it was basically like, uh, uh, don't, you don't ever say that. Basically, she's still a ten in your eyes, like whatever. Like okay, that's I, your you job know what? As I do remember that the you're husband. Right. So it was still like. I, I, I'm thinking it was within that conversation. That's the only reason why I'm bringing it up. Mm. But, no, um, and that makes sense because I didn't remember that. That's why I was like, 
why would you say that if nobody else has said anything? Yeah, that's all I was like, what's on camera? Okay, that makes sense. Um, because because okay. I was like, because I was like, this boy trying to be too honest. And he's like, uh-uh, that's your duty basically as the husband. So that's mm -hmm. why he was like, I, like, I was trying to do the husbandly thing. You know what I'm saying? And that's what the hell I was, look, that's what I thought I was. He was like, you know, trying to hold my wife down. You know what I'm saying? Trying to calm you down in the moment. And she was like, oh, okay, so you basically saying it's okay to lie. Mm. To right. Then he was like, what was I supposed to do? So she basically in a confessional, she says, you know, she feels like her husband is supposed to be smitten with her, um, you know, supposed to want to be around her, check up on her. I will um, say I, I felt for her even in that moment because I was like, it's true. Like you want to feel like somebody naturally wants. But that's why I would have been checked out because it's not happening naturally. Mm -hmm. And she says that she, um, you know, but that's why she feels like, you know, he's not all the way in. She says she feels like he got his big toe in and the rest of his body out the door. Mm. So where you at, girl? On an air balloon? You think she in the water. I think she's sitting on the side in a beach chair. Mm. Ain't nobody in the house then. <laughs> dog the dog is in the house <laughs> you stupid duchess <laughs> duchess is in the house <laughs> so dr pia stopped by to see uh clinton gina she asked them how things were going and they said they've been going good and she asked what's making it good i, I don't know why i love the fact that she was asking that question oh i like dr pia because i feel like a lot of these no shade to um gina i feel like she likes to bullshit people mm-hmm and I think that she thought coming in that she could shit her. Mm -hmm. And so her questioning made it so that she had to give a real response. And then she would question that mm -hmm. to make her dig deeper. And I, I can appreciate Dr. Pia for that. Only she, one, like, but really you, know, her you, you know who she caught up with that shit though? Kirsten. Kirsten. And <laughs> <laughs> I was in there like, oh. Right. I was like, oh, right. Kirsten. I was like, Kirsten, oh, you speechless? Look, we need we need Dr. P to host the reunion. I said, Kirsten, you speechless? We finally got a I don't know out of you, girl. Right. So um, basically, Clint says, you know, what made it good was their communication is growing. Um, they're growing in their relationship. And they're just, you know, getting along really well. And Gina agrees. Now, she said from a marriage standpoint, they don't feel married. But things are going well as far as getting to know each other and building that friendship foundation. I said, don't be hurting my baby Clint like that. Friendship. You better look, Clint, you better tell her. I ain't trying to be no friend. Over here. Huh? Clint better tell her. You say I'm just a friend. <laughs> it's okay, Clint. It's okay. So um, basically, Clint says, you know, that they have like a physical barrier. And said, and she says that there's no draw to yeah, like it's flirt. called Gina. There's no draw to flirt or hold hands or kiss or anything like that. And she's and not you remember sure. who said that though. Yeah, I know it was her. I know it was her. That's what I'm saying. Clint just be sitting there like that's not how I feel because he's physically attracted to her. I mean, he right. said he, you know, so he don't feel played. I think he said something one time, but right, but yeah, I, no, he he's but he he's, he's to... physically attracted to her. He wants to knock her down, but he. he... <laughs> um, and she's really, she says she's not sure what typically creates the draw for her. She's just been aligned with people and, you know, it just happened easily for her. And for him, he basically says it's sexual attraction, you know, and that's what makes him want to move forward in that capacity. I said, okay. I'm all ears. I hear you. Mm -hmm. Um, And she you asked are... if. <laughs> and she asked if they have sexual desires independently, quickly. Clint said, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Having one right now. Right. <laughs> um, and she asked how they're fulfilling that. Gina says, obviously on our own. <laughs> it's going to be Clint. They're in separate rooms. Clint is clearly in his room having a good time by his damn self. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Now, Gina says they don't even Is talk it about it. Yeah, he's by himself. I'm going to be nice. <laughs> Gina says they don't even talk about it because she doesn't have this sexual desire. When she doesn't have a sexual desire for anyone, like, basically, it's like, it makes her pretty awkward. And she says that she was hoping that it would just happen organically. Dr. Pia says everything takes work. 
and every relationship is different. And in order for it to grow, you have to water it. Gina says, well, we are watering it. You know, we spend time, you know, dealing, doing our intimacy in other, in other ways. And she says, but you ain't even talking about it. So it don't sound like you watering at all to me. Right. It's grass like is dry. 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 <laughs> and Gina says it grosses her out. Now, Dr. Pia asked her, how do you think you know the marriage is going to last? I love Clint. She don't want to be with Clint. Mm -mm. Anybody she, I think I think like she, you gross like you just not even going to, even when they were doing we'll get into I think it. I think she's I think she started to get aggravated with Dr. Pia's question because Dr. Pia asked her how do you think the marriage is going to last without sex and Gina says I don't even know if it's going to last like she just got yeah. tired of answering the question and I'm just, says, I'm just going to collect this check basically and Clint says the sexual component um does have to be there in a marriage and it's a challenge for them now, she says something that's important with, in with intimacy and sex in general is the context. And she's curious to, see, to you know, um, see what other contextual factors might spark their desire, like mood or smelling good. And Clint says he's definitely a scent guy. He has a plethora of colognes. What, what kind you got, sir? Because I like colognes. <laughs> And he says that he's attracted to. Oh, but you state. know what I love? He said vanilla. I know. I was like, it would oh. never work between the two of you. Mm -hmm. When he said that, said, well, there goes nails. Guess, guess what? We're gonna have to get you to like something else. <laughs> We're gonna have to get you to like something else. Cause yeah, when he said vanilla, I said, well, yeah, that's a no, no. Um, and basically, you know, she said, um, she doesn't. She basically says, you know, it's basically the same for her. You know, she likes to smell of cologne, music. But she says what really does it, and uh, you know, as far as attraction goes, is style. And she don't know if Clint got swag. He said, I'm he said, I'm saying your swag. He has been quantified as the king of swag. I said, you better a little oh okay. He got that brownie like, swag. He said, This right here is my lounge wear. But you know, if I need to dial up the needle, okay, I got pair apparel for that. He was like, his title is Senor Swag. Period. Don't be a hot man for Clint. The hell? Senor Swag? No, that's right. So oh, I play Narcos by Migos. <laughs> <laughs> I, I could just see Clint on the boat, like thinking he bad. Like, <laughs> period. Period. He would come to the cookout. I was so oh, bringing yeah. him to the cookout. Clint could come to the cookout. I love Clint. Okay. Now she said, you know. Oh, okay. She said basically like, like besides seeing like the, can, can you see yourself, you know, getting the house on like vanilla and spice and playing a good playlist? Um, basically would that generally put you in the mood without leading, without the expectation of leading to sex? And he said, yeah, he could do that, but he don't know if that would get him in the mood. She's like, I said, without the expectation. <laughs> he right. said, well, I know what the end result is. And, you know, she said, don't you worry about the end result. OK, because you're that's putting too much pressure on pressure, um, yeah. the intimacy. Now, she gives them a homework exercise that is uh, meant to take away the pressure of the expectation of sex. And she says that she wants them to focus on the sensation of what they're feeling in terms of touch. And of course, they're a little uncomfortable since they haven't talked about their physical attraction at all since the honeymoon. I thought that I don't know. I guess because I'm such a like touchy, lovey. Like this would have been fun for me, especially if we're just getting to know each other and explore what we like and don't like. I would have had fun with this, but she just again. I don't think Gina wants to. I think it's fun for you with somebody you're attracted to, though. <laughs> you I'm mean? serious. <laughs> I wouldn't want to do it with somebody I'm not attracted. Y'all know to. nails never fails. <laughs> okay. She's gonna let you know I am not attracted to you. I mean, that's like the thing where it's like if somebody's trying to get at you, it's flirting, but if they ain't attractive, it's harassment. <laughs> that's a good don't one. touch me. <laughs> okay. Um, so they cheers to getting physical, and Clint is still hung up on the fact that she doesn't think he has swag. Right. 
And she, I think, said he needed to cut his hair a little bit. Or yeah, something. she was like, I can give you a nice little haircut. You know what I mean? And he's like, damn, you didn't think like I was swaggy. Like, you didn't even let her finish the comp. Like, you didn't even let her finish the sentence. Like, he just cannot believe it. And she's like, do you think this is more offensive than the statement you made to me on our honeymoon? He's like, oh, it's worse. He's like, I can never, ever get over this. Ever. I so, love how he can make light of it. But it let me know she's still holding on to it. Mm -hmm. That's why. That, yeah. Uh -uh. Um, and, you know, she says the first step is to get him out of this. To, is to get him into a swagged out haircut. He's like, damn, you don't like my hair now? Hmm. Like, Clint, baby, just come home. Don't. Don't listen to her, okay? I will run my fingers. Because we love we love the hair clamp. Right? Don't listen. She don't know what she... The blonde works for some people. Listen, I know what she like. Okay? I know what she like. All right? What she like? I ain't gonna say it on here. Oh, but okay. I know what she like. <laughs> she might like Eris. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can see it. Um, And basically, you know... She was like, sorry, look, you can't even talk to me about your haircut because you've been trimming your hair for the past 10 years, okay? So you need you need a real deal haircut. So he's like, okay, yeah, I, I agree. Um, and basically she says, whether we stay together or not, you will thank me. So Gina, she's pretty skeptical that, you know, this playlist and the candles idea is even going to do anything. And Clint reminds her that, you know, we can't have a preconceived notion about this. Um, we are not the therapist. And who knows? Maybe after this, we might get an Amazon sex chair. She's like, how you know I ain't already got one? He said, damn, she Gina. thought it was a sex swing. Well, she said sex chair or a swing. Oh, okay. He was like, damn, Gina. Ooh, right. <laughs> she was like, well, at least you make me laugh. And he was like, well, at least you laugh at me. <laughs> I laugh at you, boo. Yeah, but again, it's still giving real friendly. I needed to get look. For I them. needed to get. You ain't gotta say too much from the look in your eyes. I can tell you wanna. Hey, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Let me say something. It ain't friendly over here, Clint. It ain't friendly over here. You, okay. Um. Damn. She said, "I don't want no friends. <laughs> no new friends." I'm, I'm on my jasmine. <laughs> <laughs> so Gina brings up brings uh to Clint's attention, the name of the exercise is called Just the Tip. He was like, oh, okay, well, that's appropriate. Mm. <laughs> Look, um, you ain't gonna get your tip nowhere near Gina, but okay. Mm -mm. Wishful so thinking. The first question, huh? I said wishful thinking. <laughs> so the first, um, the first question was a safe word, and she was like, um, just, how about stop? He said porcupine or tres leches. Tres leches. And, um, you know, they're both, apparently they're both cool with sending nudes, but Clint says, you know, he only sent his dick pics in serious relationships. He ain't mm -hmm. no, he ain't just out here just slinging his pictures. Um, and she says that. We're going to find Gina on the internet. Let me stop. <laughs> <laughs> and she says, what is a must during sex? He says for the other person to climax. Hmm. She's like, okay, that's nice. So, um, then he asked, what's your favorite position? She's like, okay, we're getting uncomfortable here. Chess leches. Okay. Safe word. She was and I like, guess no, I didn't understand why that, again, everybody has boundaries. I'm on. If you can just tell this man that you I would not tell get your nudes to somebody, to people that you weren't necessarily in a relationship with, you were just kind of sharing them. Well, that's really. because that was to somebody else. But now I'm telling my ugly homeboy, my favorite position, why would I do that? <laughs> and I'm not saying he's okay. ugly because I don't think... When you put it like that. Right? Because I don't, I don't think he's ugly at all. But I'm saying if he was my ugly homeboy, I don't want you to know my favorite position because okay. I don't want you to okay. picture me in that position. But this ain't her ugly homeboy. This is her non-attractive husband to her. <laughs> to her and not in her mind you, know, you heard you heard the friendship word so <laughs> then there was a knock on the door um and it was the basket of things um for their sensate focused therapy mm -hmm. um and they um they take turns going through the materials in the basket on each other basically it was things to you know 
heighten their senses through touch, feathers, um, mm -hmm. massage things, and like a hairbrush or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and basically, she said it wasn't awkward as she thought it was going to be. So they actually had a good time doing it. Kirsten calls Shaq while he is away at this conference um, in Memphis. She says that she wishes she could be there and talks about how important it is that she support Shaq. I'm, I'm doing this for a reason, y'all, because it's leading up to my, with her. Anyway, she says she can't wait to attend his next event. Um, and she asks when he plans on returning home. Shaq doesn't seem to have a set plan or flight or seems to be- Or even give a damn to come back home. And again, the Twitterverse agreed with me this week Shaq don't seem like he want to be around he her. He seemed aggravated as hell. Like, what the hell are you calling me for? Calling me for it. Um, so then they hang up or they get ready to hang up. She blows him a kiss and he hangs up. So then she calls him back. I'm not going to lie. I will do this. Uh, I will she, do. I will. <laughs> and says, I was trying to blow you a kiss. Um, and he obviously is a little bit annoyed because he was like, well, I didn't see you blowing a kiss. But the point was, he didn't want to talk to her. He wasn't rushing to coming home. And I would have picked up on all that, but she was definitely acting oblivious to the show. Well, because she's on camera. And she, don't want to be, and she don't want to be embarrassed. So then Shaq and Kirsten get a visit from Dr. Pia to help with the trust and intimacy in the couple's marriage. When they sit down, Shaq looks visibly on edge. Kirsten says that she thinks they're doing well now that they've been spending their quality time and getting to know each other. And Shaq says he thinks it's been rocky. <laughs> um, they've had their ups and downs and, you know, but he says that with her real estate business and his work and his school, it's really been him having a problem balancing it all. I love how he tried to like take it upon himself and that's good to take accountability. But anyway, uh, Kirsten says she has difficulty not being in control. Dr. Pia lets her know that in a marriage, one person obviously can't be in control. They both have to relinquish some control and accept each other's influence. Go ahead. Go ahead, Dr. Pia. She asked Kirsten if she feels comfortable allowing Shaq to take care of her. And Kirsten said that she's getting more comfortable day by day. She asked them to have, asked them have they talked about what attracts them to one another. And Kirsten says they haven't, but she finds Shaq attractive when he's doing manual labor and emphasize it was him being masculine that turned her on. And as I said on the Twitterverse, she doesn't respect his manhood. Uh, Dr. Pia asks her definition of masculine. So Kirsten says, getting the job done and taking care of business. So when, Pia, when Dr. Pia asks if she thinks Shaq is masculine, there is a very long pause. You know, like when the heart monitor goes off on somebody about the unalive. I was like, girl, if you want that house, you better call that man masculine. Right. You know, she says that he is. And she says her idea of masculine is her dad. Um, he's tough, a business owner, a provider. And Dr. Pia hones in on the word tough that Kirsten used. And and he, asks, she felt like she accentuated the word tough. Right. And she asks if Shaq is tough. So Kirsten feels like he can be, but she hasn't seen that side of him. So Shaq is like, well, what bitch do we need to get robbed? Like, what, what is it that you need from me? Do I need to cuss it out? For you to feel like I'm tough enough for you. And I felt where Shaq was coming from. She said she's only seen the kind, genuine, pleasing side of him. Uh, the one that was kissing your ass. Let's just be real. Dr. Pia questions whether, whether that can be masculine. And Kirsten thinks it can. Um, it can make her more comfortable and secure in her relationship. But him being tough would make her feel safer and more protected. Kirsten feels that, you know, it's a tough question and feels like because she hasn't seen, you know, obviously the tough side of Shaq, she she just doesn't know or can, can't give an example of what she would think that would make her feel that way. So Dr. Pia can appreciate, you know, Shaq just sitting there listening to this and not really saying nothing. And so she asked Shaq for his reaction. He questions why Kirsten doesn't think he's tough and wonders, uh, like I said, what needs to happen. Um, and, you know, feels like she wants him to mimic her dad, uh, the ways of being masculine and dominant. So Kirsten says she doesn't want him to be her dad, but she does want him to possess some of those traits. Mm -hmm. I ain't mad at that. I could say, but then in the she, confessional, he basically said all my life I had to fight. Right. 
Okay. He's, he's like, trying to put forth the effort. He's like, I've been trying since the beginning to prove my love. <laughs> right. Um, and yeah, he talks he talks about how she constantly says she doesn't want to change him, but she still has these expectations and it's taking a mental toll on him, mm -hmm. as we can see. Dr. Pia says her concern is him changing himself to meet her expectations because it brings resentment when he's not being his authentic self. And Kirsten stresses she wants him to be himself. No, you don't. Because you didn't like himself. Just saying. Now, Shaq and Kirsten, uh, you know, apparently were challenged to pick some items that they find sexy and they're going to go blindfold each other and use them on the other. So Kirsten is walking around the house or, or an apartment blindfolded and Shaq is trying to lead and, you know, she's trying not to run into walls. And obviously it was about trust and him leading her and guiding her, which once she stopped asking so many damn questions and listen to what he said, she got to the end goal of finding the rope in the dryer. And then it got real kinky. Um, and so then he like wrapped her up and she was like, I really like this rope around. I didn't even think it was like all that. I They're, they're like little sexual chemistry that they got is so dry to me well damn i Even thought that, that for them i thought it was good for anybody hmm. or a nun okay it the, the whole paint thing then like the the, the the string wasn't even tight on her girl please it's not even, is it, are you saying it's giving deacon and deacon that's again? <laughs> I mean, for real, like tie me up, like act like you want me to be tied up and can't move. Chanel wants to be kidnapped anyway. <laughs> so, um, So, you know, Kirsten says she likes the rope around her and likes that they're allowing their bodies and their voices lead them to whatever they're about to do. Kirsten feels she's transforming and that Shaq can lead her and she can listen to him. Shaq still feels they have things to work on in their marriage. And Kirsten is confused and wants to know what is it that he thinks they need to work on? Like she didn't just sit. Okay. Kirsten, so uh, he talks about how when he was away in Memphis at his conference, he wanted her there. This is my point. He wanted her there. And, you know, Kirsten says she wishes she... She could have been there when he was there. And he talks about how, yeah, I wish you could have too. And when you told me you was coming and then you decided to make other plans last minute and do your own thing and go and run the streets. And then you didn't understand why I was agitated and I really didn't want to talk to you nor cared to come home. Don't worry, I'll wait. Well, I'm we so didn't... sorry. Well, if we didn't sum that all up. Yeah. Yeah, because that irritated me. Um, and she says that, you know... Literally, his family said that's all he needs. That's all he needs. She tells him that she wanted him to, you know, say it. And now that she knows um, that he wanted her there, she feels terrible. And he tells her he's not going to beg her. And tells her to imagine how he feels. I said, go ahead, Shaq. I love that he's finally speaking up. I just want to know. He's she, not so much kissing her ass anymore. I just want to know if she thinks this is the right track to getting the house that she wants. She Clearly, she thinks she's a she's deserving of a house. Anyway, she says she doesn't want, him, uh, doesn't want him to feel like he's not supported by her. Production then asks Shaq if he's happy in his marriage. And he says happy is a stretch. Mm. He says grateful and overjoyed to be in the marriage, but he doesn't feel happy because he doesn't feel she supports him in the things that he likes to do in his life. We're on to the group now, right? Mm -hmm. So the guys got together to play some baseball. My poor baby Clint, he sucks at it. He, he does. does. I was, I was actually really disappointed. I was surprised that he sucked that bad. It's okay that you can't hit the balls. I'm sure you can hit something else. That's okay. He can sell boats. I don't need you to hit balls. You can sell boats. You do do what you do well. Did you hear what I said? Mm -hmm. You know. I, <laughs> and hopefully the Shade Squad didn't either. <laughs> so then the ladies, they get together to make some cocktails together. Um, the ladies take a sip of their espresso martinis that they've made. And they up ready to run their mouths now. They got the energy. Okay. Did, have you ever had that? An espresso martini? No, um, and I'll tell you why off camera. I just don't think that that mixes well. Mix. I wouldn't have thought so either. Espresso, but, alcohol, because coffee can make it's you... a up, and it's an upper and a downer, right? 
Well, no, I th I think it, it it probably is an upper upper because the alcohol the alcohol alcohol uh uh alcohol does the complete opposite for me. That should make me sleepy. Oh uh, no, I could see it, but um yeah no, I just I feel like it would make my stomach hurt and lead to other things that I don't want to talk about. So okay, um, so we'll <laughs> we'll leave that right there. Yeah. Um. So the guys are sitting around um talking about how their weeks have been, and Chris says I'm hitting home runs, home. <laughs> Look, we play over here, okay. Right. And he says their conversation was good, um, but Nicole is having some um, self-worth issues. Now, Nicole, she tells the ladies that she needs to do some personal work, and it just came to light. And she is realizing she has a lot of work to do and says that basically Chris really can't help her with much of it. But when he does see that she needs, you know, that she's looking upset, he needs to kind of force her to talk it out. And said, sometimes he's just a little bit too respectful and he'll be like, I'm here for you when you're ready to talk. And if it's up to her, she She's won't ever be ready to talk. He, But she wants him to, no shades to Nicole. Again, I hate to go back in on you, but you want him to pull all that out of you. And it's so much that you want to, I, I wouldn't want to do it either. I'd be only like, okay. You, only if you was married to a therapist, child. Right, right. Now, Shaq, nice guy, but he is not a therapist. Mm -mm. Now, Shaq says out of a 10, they're like a seven or eight. It's just like little nitpicky things. Only thing that he asked for in the beginning was support. And he says their intimacy um, and stuff has grown. You know, they're kissing and stuff now. Um, Eris said, you know, since we're on a baseball field. Where what base would you say you at? He said like first, second, third, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. He ain't really get no answers. I think they already got it in. Um, That's, too. That's why I was like, why are we playing coy? But I, I get it. But Kirsten did too. Mm -hmm. So the ladies asked Kirsten the same question. And she says, you know, they're working up to it. And she says that she wants him to lead and initiate. And said, basic, and they basically said, so if he does that, you ain't going to turn him down? And she started blushing. It was like, look, let me call him right now. Let me let, let, let me send some smoke signals, some something to let him know. You know what that give? But you again, it goes back to the point. Her and Eris would have been perfect for each other. I said it. I said it. She would have, if anything, she would have had to keep Eris off her ass. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, I think he, I think he's attracted to her too. Yeah. But you know, hang on, disrespect. So, Clint said that they're not even in the dugout. And it's a weird space. No, he said he's not even in the stadium. Is that what he said? He said, him and Eric said they're not even in the stadium. Mm. <laughs> they sitting outside. They ain't got tickets to the game. They not even gone. They at home watching on TV. Right. Jeez. Alone. <laughs> um, basically, he said it's a weird space for him to be in because he's a sexual dude. And, you know, he's trying to have an open mind and not have like a predetermined um, outcome of how this process is going to be. So he's still he's still in it to win it. Now, Gina says that they have to build some sort of intimacy to figure out if they can sustain any type of healthy marriage. She said they're not quitters and they're trying so hard for it to just be there. Yeah. Yeah, I can, I, I can see that. We can tell. Um, We're just trying so hard to make it a decision day and tell each other no. Exactly. Well, said that that, felt like that's what she's giving. I think Clint is actually giving it his all. Like he's of actually course. trying. Of course. You stupid. <laughs> Eric said that he felt like the doctors she gonna already. Beside him, Shay Squad. She gonna <laughs> stick beside him. I'm gonna stick beside him. I got my cape on for him. Okay. Here he is. Got leg. Hmm. <laughs> Say that off the camera. Yes, please. Please. <laughs> How much more do I have to edit? Jesus. Be a fence. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <sighs> See, sometimes I just be, you know, like we have a girl talk. But okay. So Aaron said that, you know, he felt like the doctor already knew like they weren't having sex. And said that. They didn't even talk about sex. They really just talked about other ways um, to be intimate. Right. He says, 
And he says that, you know, he's had a situation in the past where he's grown to like people past the physical. So he's trying to find other ways to, you know, get back to that with her. Now, she said in their conversations with the experts, he said he was going to do, he was going to be more intentional. He's going to do this. He's going to do that. And he wanted to work. And, you know, she feels like after it's acknowledged, there's no change. Mm. And Kirsten asked if so. They has had she opened her mouth in this in this last two three episodes? Because I think everybody that she sat down and talked with and has told her she needs to open her damn mouth, and yet she still ain't saying nothing. So uh -uh. where is your action, Jasmine? Now Kirsten um, said, "Have y'all had this conversation?" She said, "No," because she doesn't have the conversations that need to be had because she's a very brush things under the rug type of person. And she said that's something that, you know, she's learning about herself and she's trying to grow from it. She's just worried. She says that she's just more worried about what the answer is going to be. I she said that. I said that. Emotional. She doesn't want to hear, I'm just not there. Or I'm I mean, just well, She's not already heard it. How much worse could it be? She's already heard it, but she's heard it so many. And instead of going and leaving, she's like, I. but I'm just going to act like, that's the problem. Either if you're going to stay, you know what he how he feels about it. So either you make the best of it and move forward and try to grow the relationship, but you pulling back doesn't help anything when he already is not feeling you. Mm -hmm. Well, she gets super emotional and says, you know, she just thinks that she's really at her breaking point. Of course, everybody's heart is broken for her. And, you know, she said emotionally, she just doesn't know what she has left to give at this point. I feel bad for that baby. I just need her, but I just need her to speak up. Even I, I'm not saying it got to be toxic, but I just need her to really say how she feel one time and whether he cares and whether he doesn't just get it off her chest and move on and move forward mm -hmm. and know what it is. And you, because what it is, is even if she does leave him, she's going to leave with all this stuff on her heart that she's carrying and she's going to take that into the next relationship mm -hmm. because she didn't get it out and she yeah. needs to get it out. That's why it's really bothering me because I see her holding it, holding it, holding it. And it's like, but you're not dealing with it and it's going to become baggage for you. Yeah. Bless her heart. Yes, ma'am. That's it. Oh, Shade Squad. Thank you guys for yes, tuning in. Please to another review of Married at First Sight, season 16, episode 14. If you have not already, please make sure that you hit that like button. You comment. You subscribe. And you hit the notification bell. And y'all make sure you catch us next week. Oh, well, make sure you're following us on all the platforms, especially the Twitter, because I'll be there next week. Then live, we'll be having a good old time. Um, but yes, catch us next week for another review of Married at First Sight. And thank you guys for getting- Happy up. Easter. Happy Easter. And again, thank you, thank you, thank you guys for helping us grow, glow, and getting us to the 400 Cub. Now let's reach 500, 600 so we can have more Please. reasons to go out and celebrate and give y'all, yeah. you know, more shorts, more TikToks and all that fun stuff that y'all like. But anyway, we'll catch you next week. Happy Easter. Love you. Bye-bye. Good night.